In today's video, we're going to take a look at how to get uh, the current time in C. It's actually a very simple and straightforward process, so let's get started. First, we're going to have to include the time.h header. Here you have all sorts of uh, utility functions regarding timing and clocks and whatnot. So this header actually helps in uh, many situations. So from this header time.h, we're going to use the function time. And this function takes in a parameter that we're going to just pass in null, which is not really an issue. And this, this function returns basically the number of seconds since the epoch Unix time, which is the 1st of January 1970. Okay, and uh, the return type is actually of time underscore t. So we're going to have to declare here a variable time underscore t. I'm going to call it t in this case, and that's going to be equal to the result, whatever we return here. So now we can take this uh, variable t and print it on the screen and say current time is percent d backslash n and t. Now I am going to use here percent, uh, well percent ld is more correct because this time underscore t on my system at least is defined as a long. Uh, so we can simply consider it as a long integer. This is what time usually returns in most uh, in most platforms. So we're going to do it, uh, we're going to use percent ld here and then if we launch this of course we're going to get the number of seconds since 1970. Now, there's a bit of an issue here. Um, whenever you want the time in a program, you might want to show it as a date, you know, year, month, uh, day, and maybe the hour as well, maybe also the time zone. How can we do that? One of them being the local time function. And uh, this function can be found in time.h as well. And it takes in, as you might notice from the signature, it takes in the uh, a reference to our time underscore t uh, variable. So we can pass in a reference to that. And it also returns a different type of struct called tm. And this tm actually stores data about the calendar date of the of the time you're looking for. So for example, it stores in the year, the, the month, and so on and so forth. Uh, and we can just simply declare it here, say struct tm, and let's call it, oh, I don't know, let's say date or something like that. And that's going to be equal to our local time. Now, this is not going to work right now because this guy actually returns a pointer, as you can see here, to our struct. So we're going to have to dereference this, this pointer uh, to assign it to our uh, data type properly. And now, okay, everything works nicely. Now, if we try to look into what this struct has, we can see that we actually have a lot of uh, information about the current date. And uh, the more important ones are the year, of course, the month is here, the, the day of the month as well, and uh, other such things like the hour, the minutes, the offset from GMT, and so on and so forth. Lots of, uh, <laughs> lots of things are in here. So let's start with just showing the current calendar date. We're going to start with a printf and we're going to create a format string for that. So let's say current date, let's say is, and then I'm going to say percent %d, so that's going to be the year, and then minus percent %d as well, but I'm going to uh, set it up so that it, it pads the, uh, the character. So when uh, the month is 7, it's going to show 0, 7. All right, that's, I think that's straightforward. And same thing for the day of the month, so 0 to d in this case. Now I have to pass in some variables here. So I'm going to say date.tm underscore year. So that's the first one, that's our year. Then date dot, well, we have the month, so tm underscore mon for month. And then date.tm underscore m day is for the day of the of the month. All right, and if we, let's add here a backslash n because I forgot. And let's try to run this now. So if we try to run this, you will notice that, well, we get a result, but it's not what we expect, right? It's, it's the year 123 for some reason. It's the month zero and the day is 26. Right now, as a quick reference, today is 26th of January, 2023. So what's up with this weird date? What, what happened? Well, uh, first thing first for the year, if you hover over this member, you will notice that the year is actually subtracted the, the number 1900 from it. So we're actually not 
storing that 1900. Therefore, if you want to actually uh, show the proper E, you're going to have to add back this 1900 years of difference. Okay, that's straightforward. If we launch this again, you'll notice, yep, we do get the correct year. Perfect. Now with the month, well, it's kind of the similar situation. Um, basically, the month, the January is the month zero and December is the month 11 for this format. So we're going to have to add one to, to it so that it's actually normalized. And that's great and all. Now it actually works. It shows the proper date. And if we take a look at the day, you will see that it's actually from 1 to 31st. And uh, that's correct for what we are trying to show. Okay, now let's say we want to add the hour and the minutes as well. So you can say percent zero two D colon, same exact thing. There we go. And we can actually get the date dot PM underscore hour and date dot PM underscore minute. And if we try to launch this, we should see 1534. And that is, well, I can say that it is the correct time because that's the correct current time that I'm uh, re recording all this. Perfect, but uh, what this means is that this local time function actually returns the local time in the current time zone. And uh, well, we can check that by actually printing the time zone. So let's say we, we want to see what time zone it's using. We can say time zone, let's say percent, I think it's percent S, tm underscore zone right so we can do this let's add a backslash n here time zone is all that now if we try to launch this you'll notice that it's uh, eastern european time so that's perfectly fine and if you want to know the actual number of uh, well uh, hours of difference you can actually say percent d and you can get it through date dot tm underscore gmt off and this one is actually in seconds so it's a bit more different but it's actually two hours in second. But if you want to actually get the GMT time, you can simply call the function GM time instead of local time. So there's a function called GM time, and it's basically the same thing, except it's using the UTC or Greenwich mean time uh, time zone. And if I launch this, you will notice that now we are on the GMT time zone for this date that we are using. Now I want to go over a few more details regarding all this. So sort of to make the code production ready, if you ever need to use this in a production environment, uh, this is what I would do. First things first, I wouldn't dereference this straight off uh, the call itself. And uh, instead of using GM time, I would use GM time underscore R because this function, while it may be only in the new C23 standard, uh, it's actually thread safe. So you can rely on it running all the time in a threading environment if you, of course, uh, pass in a reference to the, to the struct that you want to set. So instead of returning the result, this gm time underscore r actually has you just pass in a reference to this data that you want to set. That's great and all. Also, if for some reason it fails, you can just check for it. You can just say if this is no, then I don't know, let's return an error code, right? So if for some reason it fails, it's easy to return null. For GM time as well, you can do the same. You can check for null. Uh, it's just that the assignment is all wonky and you kind of have to make sure that you first store the pointer somewhere. You you check if it's null and then you actually well use it somewhere else. Similarly with the time function, you can actually, uh, instead of null here as the first parameter, you can actually pass in a reference to this time underscore t. So instead of calling it like this, you can just say time underscore t and pass in a reference to it and it would be the exact same result. In this case, it doesn't really matter simply because if this function fails in production, it actually returns a uh, negative one. So you can check if t equals, I'm gonna pass it to time underscore t, and say minus one. Okay, so if this is minus one, then we know that something bad happened and we can return an error code. And now if you try to run this, it's going to basically work the exact same way. Not much uh, difference there. All right, that's about it for this video. In a later videos, we're gonna take a look at how to format 
these uh, dates and also we're going to take a look at how to uh, know the elapsed time a function took to execute. So that's, that's also a very important topic. Uh, until then, I hope you got something out of this video. If you do have any questions, leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. Take care.